Welcome to the IDKD Refresher Series, a new case on musculoskeletal diseases, a patient with anterior shoulder pain and decreased range of motion. My name is Christian Fuhrman from Zurich, Switzerland. Our case today is a case of a 60 years old man with anterior shoulder pain, decreased range of motion and loss of active and passive elevation without any history of trauma. The patient was referred for standard MR imaging of his right shoulder. A brief overview on his examination. We have here a PD fat saturated coronal oblique sequence and a corresponding non fat saturated image. We have here a transverse PD fat saturated sequence. We have here a sagittal oblique PD fat saturated image and a corresponding non fat saturated sequence and we have a T1 weighted sequence also in sagittal oblique. The analysis of the MR examination is done in a standardized fashion from uh, peripheral to central AC joint, acromion, bursa, then uh, rotator cuff, uh, rotator cuff muscles, rotator cuff interval, and finally the intraarticular structures. The first that we notice is OA of the AC joint uh, with uh, subcondylar reaction. Then we look at the uh, at the bursa. There is no significant fluid collection in uh, the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. Then we look at the cuff. Uh, the supraspinatus tendon shows some irregularities of the bursal surface and some signal changes. However, there is no tear. The infraspinatus uh, looks nice. It's nicely high point dense. Uh, the subscapularis uh, shows some insertional changes uh, at the lesser tubercle without any tear. Now we have a look at the rotator cuff interval. What we observe here in between the supraspinatus and the subscapularis, the biceps tendon. As we go uh, medially, we can see the attachment. Uh, here we have signal changes in the bicep changes quite linear. Then we have caliber changes. You can see here a small caliber and a larger caliber as we go more lateral. And when we go in the sulcus, a normal caliber. So caliber changes. And finally, we, show, we see a mar marked enlargement of the long biceps tendon in the rotator cuff interval at the site where the tendon goes into the sulcus. So let's summarize our findings. We have a marked enlargement of the long biceps tendon. We have caliber changes and we have signal changes in the long biceps tendon. The findings caliber changes and signal changes are diagnostic for a tendon degeneration or a tendinosis. Especially the caliber changes have a very high specificity. However, we have a second finding in our case. We have a marked enlargement of uh, the biceps tendon and this is termed the hourglass uh, biceps. This is an enlargement uh, in the intraarticular subacromial part. It is a hypertrophic uh, portion of the biceps tendon unable to slide into the bicipital groove during elevation similar to a trigger finger in the hand. This was described first by Pascal Boileau and here is an interesting arthroscopy image where you can see in elevation that there is folding up of the tendon intraarticularly because the tendon cannot slide into the bicipital groove. The treatment is usually done by tenotomy or tenodesis. A few teaching points to conclude. The long biceps tendon is an important pain generator in the shoulder. Abnormalities occur most commonly in the intraarticular subacromial part. Therefore, it's necessary to analyze the biceps tendon on sagittal oblique images. Caliber changes are very specific for a tendinosis and the hourglass biceps is caused by a hypertrophic subacromial portion. Here is a list of some papers to read on the topic. 
and uh, thank you very much for your attention.